A couple of weeks ago, we posted a video on how to use vintage typography. We were sharing some tips and things like that, but I thought it would be a good idea to take that a step further and actually show you how you can achieve some of those techniques using Kittle. So we're gonna look at some type specimen sheets and then we're gonna show you how to achieve those styles. So if you haven't signed up for Kittle yet, go ahead and do so. You can get in for free using the link in the description and then you can follow along with this tutorial. So let's dive in. So if we take a look at these type specimen sheets, we can see some really cool effects going on. Here's another one here with some shadow behind detailed 3D lettering. And so here's another sheet as well. And you can actually achieve these in Kittle. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So with this first one, we have a nice monoline font here and we're going to add a border and we're going to make this kind of inset uh, pinstripe type ordeal going on here. So if we change our border to this pink here and boom, I can raise this up. And so now you can see that really thin inline there, but let's, let's actually invert this. So I want the outside to be the light tan there and or the cream color and then I want the inside to be pink like that and so boom just ever so slightly this kind of inline pinstripe looks really cool like this now let's add some effect here let's add some shading so boom there's a 3d block shadow going on or block block shadow right here and so we can change the angle with this slider really easily so I have this kind of mid mid green in between the background green uh, that is really easy to see and so we can change these to other things if we want to maybe increase the offset a little bit like this and then what we can do is duplicate the text you can hit command c and command v i'm just going to put them right back on top so if i go to layers here are two of the same text i'm going to lock the first one select the second one and then we can continue to work to make a really cool effect so this is kind of a hack here uh, let's just take the border weight off we don't need that let's make both of them the same green again we're kind of just making a secondary shadow here now what we can do is pick a completely different kind of shadow. Let's, let's do drop shadow, and then we can pick this much darker color um, right here. It's kind of this mid black here. Increase the blur a little bit, and then boom, you can see it's kind of hopping off the page. And then we can change the angle. So maybe we put it to the left, so there's a little bit of light coming from the right, and maybe so it's kind of detailed shadow on the left. And that's how you can easily get a super cool effect in just a matter of about a minute and a half like this using Kittle. So let's go ahead and move on to our next one here. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to use the 3D uh, blocking kind of embezzled shadow here. And then we're going to add some oblique lines, these kind of diagonal lines right here like this. And then we can change the weight to be really, really fat or we can make them really, really small like this. But I think if we, in again, we need to invert the color. So let's change that darker copper color to this pink I want the pink to be the main color and then we'll make the lines the color of that copper color so now we have that kind of over top of that pink same deal I'm gonna copy and paste boom if I go in here lock that first layer I just want to work with the second layer so then over here I don't really need this all, all this 3d going on anymore so I can just take that off but now I still have the oblique lines going on right the diagonal lines. so boom check that out I moved it around and you can see the lines now if I make this pink the background color it gives it this kind of cool etching this hatching style that's behind it and then I can just use my arrow keys and I can move it around to make this secondary uh, shadow style with the etched line just like that it's really easy just a little bit of a hack of course you'll have to change it if you change your text but that is a super easy to way to do this in Kittle now let's move on to our third example so again we have some nice sans serif type here and we're gonna go over and we're gonna get started with some block shadow we're gonna change our offset and we're gonna change our angle uh, to be downward like this and what we'll be doing is making a secondary detailed shadow it's gonna be pretty easy to do um, just make sure you're messing with the angle to make sure there's no kind of weird thing sticking out like over here on the end it's nice and clean the way it is right now so let's go ahead and duplicate this text put it on the front go to the layers and make sure you select your second text the back text and then what we can do is we can go over here and change our color so we can change this copper color to a dark color like this and then change our opacity 
to be not so intense. So I've selected that black color and now I've lowered the opacity and now if we change the offset, boom, we have a secondary shadow. But I want to change it drastically to be the opposite way. So I want this to maybe kind of be like their really big metal letters sitting on something and a big bright light is casting this shadow uh, underneath it. Now you can see some yellow peeking out there. We want to go to the yellow, change it to the background color and then make sure you go back to your shadow and just kind of tweak it ever so slightly so that it's not kind of peeking through it's not creating that shadow effect so i think this looks better if we drop that opacity that's looking a lot nicer but what's cool is now i can change my background color to be anything and that shadow stays the way it is isn't that cool because we lowered the opacity it's uh, it's it's agreeing with any kind of background color so let's go to our last example here we have some serif type for this one we're going to get a little bit experimental with our shadow we're going to kind of put it on a different perspective here so let's get started with the initial layout we're gonna go over and add some decoration so if we click this color cut decoration on the bottom right now we can change the weight here we can make it really really thin or fat I think something more on the thin side is gonna be cool so then we can go over here we can add a border weight and if I add enough of the same color you can see it kind of makes this really cool inset effect so I'm liking how that looks so let's go ahead and add some shadow here we're gonna add a line shadow right here change the distance I don't want anything super super crazy because again we're gonna get crazy with the perspective here. So let's duplicate our text just like we did with the last couple. Make sure that that's all lined up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to turn off this top layer. So I'm gonna hit the little eye, I'm gonna turn it off and lock it. So now we only have the backward text, the background text going on. So we don't need any line weight and we actually don't need any shadow or crazy color. So let's actually change that cream to the background color because I want it to just be like it's gone. And then I'll take the pink I'll select that green but then maybe a darker green because this is shadow okay it's more it's actually more towards dark so super dark greens almost black then let's turn our text back on I know it looks like nothing's happened select your background text and then go to the distort button down there the distort transformation and then look at this if I move these points I can create a really cool effect like the light is coming from the front or maybe kind of the front off center to the right and then we just want to make sure we have an even line here because if you get really wonky with it I don't think the light source would really make sense so we have all of these lines pretty much in in line with each other on this plane on this perspective here that makes it look like the type has casted a shadow towards the back which is a super cool effect now what's also cool is you can still mess with the weight and it will affect the background like that and you can also affect with the distance do you want a really short shadow do you want a really long shadow you can do it like that really really easily in just a couple of clicks in Kittle Well, I hope you have a ton of fun with those vintage type styles. And if you want to learn more and you're really into vintage typography, I have some great videos for you right here on my right. So check those out. I know you're going to love them. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, create magic.